Hello folks, welcome to another Bitcoin market analysis by <coughs> Inspo Crypto. <coughs> wow, my voice. <coughs> um, but I'm fine. I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not ill or something. Well, welcome to another um Analysis, as you as mentioned and announced yesterday, I will tweet, um, of course, about that uh, later on. I will provide another analysis tomorrow. I th I think this weekend could be maybe even, um, yeah, get exciting uh, something. Um, I would expect, but we will see. Uh, let us start to talk about. Um, Pivot and FAT and PPI. PPI, what does that mean? Well, usually the producer has, the manufacturer has to buy room materials. Um, so if the room materials, not only room materials, also logistics, crude oil, gas prices, and so on and so forth are related to that, but usually, uh, when the manufacturer has to buy room materials, um, those conditions will also um, yeah, give him the opportunity to manage a little bit the price of, of the um, product at the end of the day. Means if room materials go up in price, he pays more and of course he gives this um, price inflation directly to retail that's absolutely logic um, and yeah so when the PPI starts to lift up and I mean we are just talking about 0.1% but just remember last time we went from 0.3% to 0.2% and the market reacted extremely exaggerated something that this time it didn't happen oh and that's really interesting, right? So to the opposite direction, it doesn't happen. But so also indicating that Wall Street constructed this narrative of pivot and so on and so forth. And now it's indicating it's not working anymore. So um, the PPI gives uh, the inflation directly to the next. That's usually the retail. And retail gives usually uh, this price inflation directly to the consumers. So PPI usually has an effect to the CPI afterwards. And yeah, I mean, it's not big from 0.2% 0, 0 uh, go up to 0 0.3%. That's not, that's not the point. The point is that many people just were expecting just because crude oil uh, prices went down that inflation will go down and that's something you know even people who are you know they have in their bio they managed 30 billions uh, if I'm correct 30 billions portfolio whatever I, I, I mean I can verify that but usually someone that knows a little bit of economics should know that the current situation is not mainly driven by crude oil. It's mainly driven by COVID. It's mainly driven by a supply chain disruption in China due to the zero COVID policy, but at the same time also due to the Ukraine-Russia conflict because, you know, fertilizer and other stuff we need for example for the fruit food production um, and that's the main factor okay so many people who are living for example in cities um, don't need the car it's it's a luxury they can use the car but they usually also have a very well working infrastructure it means they can use the train, the subway, bus, whatever. So they can prevent to take the car, but they can't prevent to eat. And that's something you need to understand. I mean, they can't prevent, they can't avoid to eat, they can't 
avoid, you know, many other things we need in our daily life um, to, to, yeah, just to go to work, just to make the daily business. And I, I'm still shocked that many people were still expecting a pivot situation due the declining crude oil price. Of course, if crude oil price is declining, we have peace in Ukraine, Russia, and China stops with, uh, with its zero uh, COVID policy, then the markets will go up like hell because that's, that's these Bermuda Triangle. That's the big problem at the moment. It's not just one thing. And yeah, in my opinion, we are still on track because uh, the U.S. Um, did its agreement with Venezuela. So via Chevron, they are getting cheap um, uh, crude oil. Uh, the question is, I, I'm not sure. I mean, as long as China has its zero um, COVID policy, it will work because Venezuela needs to sell its uh, crude oil to someone and why not to the US at the moment and I'm absolutely sure that's absolutely not in the political agenda of Maduro the president of Venezuela and I'm absolutely sure it's also not in the political agenda of Joe Biden uh, at the same time because they don't like each other and they know exactly that to go to bed with the devil at the moment from both sides but they need at the moment however this agreement is uh, like I tweeted just in my analysis uh, a few weeks ago it's you know managed on really thin ice and the whole scenario can change a lot for the US in Europe we still have the same problems now we have a crude oil cap on Russian oil, something that's sixty dollars per barrel. It's not going to hurt uh, Russia a lot, but it's going to hurt Europe a lot. So, I mean, it's obvious what will happen. Inflation will not decline. Will absolutely not decline as long as we still have these problems. And at the moment, I don't see any step from the Western countries to, you know, to see a step step forward, hitting Russia to say let us let us try to fix the problem. I I know it's not easy, and I know I have followers from Ukraine. It's a very emotional topic, mainly in particular when you are affected and your family so I can understand that I, I'm just talking from very uh, non-emotional economics perspective and only if we can fix that we can you know make positive progress related to inflation but it's not happening because not the NATO is doing anything instead uh, they went over to attack um, military bases on Russian territory. So that's not going to let the whole situation de-escalate. At the same time, for example, the German military is spending now billions and billions in short-term and decrypt radios and F-35, something that it surprised me a lot that the German government is going to spend, I don't know, I think it's 20 billion or something in F-35 um, airplanes. But however, it is what it is. And in my opinion, the zero COVID policy in China is not going to end as long mm, we still have some problems with with Russia in my opinion because they are very well connected China needs Russia for, um, because of its uh, crude oil Russia needs China at the same time and their alliance, alliance um, is becoming bigger 
So the BRICS, for example, is becoming bigger and stronger. And yeah, that's, in my opinion, the whole geopolitical, but also global economic uh, situation is not looking great at all. And I wouldn't expect to see a declining inflation soon. At least related to those um, mentioned factors. If we talk about consumer behavior, that's what I mentioned several times in the recent month where I said, yeah, inflation will decline, but it will not decline because the Fed is raising interest rates. The interest rates, I have mentioned some examples like, you know, the only thing that the Fed is doing is minimize, reduce the impact to the national economy. But it's not fighting it. It's not possible. That's something we need to understand. If you don't understand that, you will always absorb the risk of Wall Street when they start to launch a new narrative that's absolutely wrong because it's absolutely out of any logic. If you understand that, then you know what is going to happen with equities. And if Bitcoin maintains coupled to, the, to some equities or, for example, to SPX and SPY, they will follow it. And it's not bullish at all. Even when inflation starts to decline, we need to analyze why it will decline or why it's declining. And my opinion it will decline because of this mentioned flip of consumer behavior means the consumer will start to spend less money um, i guess it will start next year christmas we know that it's um, a highlight for consumers at the same time we also know that the consumers are using more and more credit cards to pay and to finance all these uh, spendings so that's going to have a boomerang effect because interest rates will go up more means all your credits you have to pay every month and we all know that credit cards have at least here a flexible interest um, yeah credit or loan um, interest rate so in such case they need to pay even more in the next few months and when consumer behavior will start to, to flip, it will have a direct impact to retail. And we also know that retail is getting in trouble, serious trouble, not only in Europe, also in the US. Also an indicator that these guys usually try to absorb the inflation to attract demand. But if no demand is coming they will close that's obvious and so also the manufacturing performance will reduce because if you have less retail you have less demand and so of course you will produce less so you don't need that much stuff anymore many machines will stop to to run and many of these machines if you stop them, it's not just short term because it's extremely costly to set up these machines. And so sometimes, usually, when you know that you have a lack of demand and that's short term, even if you are making minus with that machine, you let the machine run. But even in Europe, for example, they are starting to stop running these machines indicating as well that the manufacturing performance will decline so they will start to reduce its stuff and that's then a chain reaction it starts with manufacturers that goes over to retails retails goes over of course to logistic companies and a lot of other suppliers unemployment rate will go up people will demand less products more and more and more and you know 
and welcome to the defla uh, deflation circle. That's why inflation will decline. Fed will try to maintain and to control these, um, this scenario, this situation, trying to cut interest rates, even to pivot, just to, you know, to control the declining of inflation rate. But usually, and that's what I mentioned several months ago, over and over again, when the trust or when when um, consumer behavior flips, it's extremely difficult to get them uh, to generate enough trust so that some the consumer behavior will flip again to more demand. We had that in in end of the 1990s and in the beginning of 2000 in Japan, for example, they um, just generated more money, they printed more money, they give away money to their citizens so they could just generate some demand to let them consume. They really, they gave them money for nothing and it didn't work for a long, long time. And that's the big problem. And I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that the Fed knows that, that the central bankers knows that. They know that's a big risk. But at the same time, they, if they start to pivot now, we will go up in inflation much more. And they don't see at the moment, it seems, from geopolitical perspective, that it will flip short term so they don't it's what i said month ago the fed the central bankers did a very bad work in the past and now they have extremely limited options and they will use these options as long as they can but in my opinion it's just too late everything is just too late they can try to prevent the worst case, but in my opinion, at the end, the worst case will happen. The worst case means we will go to a deflation, we will have a negative interest rate, while we will still have a lack of demand. And that will happen. In such case, yeah, unemployment, many people, they will try uh, to survive and so on and so forth. Uh, that's, in my opinion, that's what it will happen. It's a process. It's not going to happen from one month to the other. We will see that and the markets will react. And so we will see what will happen. I mean, nobody knows how the transition to CBDs will happen, for example, because a lot of banks has a lot of cash still <laughs> Uh, and their and their safes. So how to make an exchange to CBD? Um, some people say the only way is to have a crash, a crash of the fiat system, and the Great Reset. We know this name, the Great Reset. Um, and yes, it's potentially one scenario, and that could have or could be a nice opportunity for crypto as well. But it's too early to say that. We need to make step by step. And the first step looks like we will have a little bit more inflation or at least maintain. And even the people will say, yeah, but, but inflation is not going much more up. Yes, you're right, but it's not declining. Even if we raise the, the rates already, um, different times by 50 75 pps and it seems it doesn't have the effect if the only effect that it had was to stabilize the inflation well then yeah they achieved their goal but it's not the case because the fed mentioned and announced many times the goal is to bring inflation back to two percent that's the same case for the ecb that's not going to happen in that way so 
That's it for my initial comment today, an initial comment of almost 20% to give you an, I think, um, an compact overview of what should happen in the next few years. Yeah, I'm talking about years. Uh, we can have a relief rally at certain moment when the first time uh, Fed or central bankers will talk about pivot. Uh, but that's it. That's it. We will go down even more afterwards. That's That will be the case. So don't absorb all informations, all tweets you read out there. Always make questions and use your brain. It's absolutely God gave you a brain to think, to make questions and don't don't believe everything you not even from my side always make your own research always make your questions and try to figure out the answer that's the key so let us go now to the crypto market and let us check what's going to happen next so the wealth ratio the wealth ratio 30 days moving average is lifting up again or it lifted up it should lift up even more it takes a little bit it seems um, so we bounced here again and usually because uh, as mentioned just once 30 days moving average uh, we went down very hard that's what it happened afterwards we went up a little bit down and then up so usually we should go a little bit more down in my opinion and then up once again and um yeah they should then start um to unload um actually that's what's happening i mean we have seen today the volume uh, lifted up very well we can check that so for example no i don't i don't have the volume well we have the volume here um and as you see the volume went up very well but at the same time the price went down so indicating whales are still unloading and we are receiving more bitcoins to centralized exchanges at the same time so yeah the whole thing keeps very exciting and uh, how i'm not going to long that um, just to be honest however we need to be extremely careful uh this weekend and even monday because tuesday we will have um let me check next week Monday ISM non-manufacturing PMI. No, that was this week. Next week, <laughs> Monday, nothing. Tuesday, core CPI, CPI, CPI. So yearly, monthly. Wednesday, FOMC economic projections, statement, Fed interest rate decisions, and the press conference. Thursday, core retail sales, Philadelphia Fed manufacturing, and retail sales. Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, pain. Volatility for sure and pain. Monday, I guess front running means over the weekend, maybe, maybe front running it, Bitcoin will push up to liquidate a lot of shorts or they will maintain a tiny level of the CME Friday session close. And Monday push up with SPI and SPX before Tuesday we nuke or we dump, whatever. That's something we need to see, but it looks very much to that because they really unload a lot. Uh, right now they let the price go up again, but in my opinion, that's just short term. So, um, yeah, let us go to the next. The weights ratio, uh, 30 hours moving average. Um, here you see that the weights ratio, 30 hours moving average, lifted up, like, you know, pushing up, indicating they were preparing it. Afterwards, they stopped to send uh, Bitcoins. And so what happened? I mean, we lifted up, we maintained a, looking like a lot of distribution here, pushed up a wrong one and then went down. And they unload a lot. So um, also here we can see the stable coin reserves and centralized ex exchanges, cash out, push up, 
cash out a bit, maintaining. So we still have money there to push up a little bit more and then go down. In my opinion, the front one will go, will go to the upside and just go to the downside um, afterwards. So that would be my expectation. And nobody knows exactly what these guys are going to do if they are going to raise interest rates 50 BPS, 75 BPS, 100 BPS or just 25. As mentioned today on my tweet, 25 BPS is extremely bullish short term, just short term. They did that once at the beginning and um, I can imagine that could happen once again. So I would be extremely careful. I wouldn't trade uh, with uh, high leverage, um, maximum 10 to maximum 15 and maybe until Tuesday um, just hatch a little bit. That's it. Let us go forward. So flow activity, Pff, nothing. Really nothing. Bigger outflow, so 2,500 bitcoins here, for example, indicating a big distribution happened. And uh, another 1,500 bitcoins here, right now relatively flat. At the same time, the biggest inflow today was here with almost 1,000 bitcoins, so absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, as you can see right now, in the last two hours, we received another 1000 Bitcoin, so absolutely flat at the moment. And um, also stablecoin inflows, I mean, 228 million outflows here, 145 million inflows here. Even here, we had an outflow of 280 million and 250 million here, and we received another 145 million here. So indicating almost 400 million. And that was where they pushed up and started to distribute at the moment, cashing out. And yeah, everything makes sense from here. So we will see, in my opinion, we should go a little bit more up, hitting 17.5 and maintain there maybe over the weekend to dump next week. So let us see. So what we see here uh, confirms a little bit what I have in my mind. Um, you, the, the red line is the funding rate and it's a downward trend. So even if it went up at certain moments like here, like here and right now, the trend is downward, indicating they are demanding more shorts. And that's the big thing right now. Um, would I now short? I'm shorting because it's still my head short. Uh, I close my lung at the moment. Mm, I will see what happens over the weekend. Maybe I'm going to place a hatch long now because right now I flipped. So, you know, my main position is now the short, not anymore the long. So I will hatch with the long and um, usually before we go down, we go up first. So I'm not your financial advisor and that's not a financial advice, but if you think too short, maybe I would wait until Monday, to be honest. But I, I don't know. I don't know what will happen in the weekend. If, if, <laughs> if they want to unload, um, in the weekend with low volume, we can go, you know, if, if the front run happens and the opposite way, we go down hard first. Well, then, you know, uh, can happen. I don't think so. I think they will wait until um, next Monday. And I guess SPY, SPX, they will use any kind of, you know, information, I think to push up first, liquidate uh, the, lo uh, the shorts, and then uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, go down. So, however, we need to be extremely careful here. Uh, if we zoom out, of course, you can see that uh, they started to demand more shorts here since December 7th, that's two days ago. And we had the same here, 
and we didn't uh, go down instead uh, we went up and when we went up they started to demand more longs what happened we went down afterwards so i would be extremely careful um just as mentioned if we take a look um the open interest since here we are right now lifting up a little bit but we are really really close to that level so it didn't recover means less money involved in futures as well even leverage ratio it pushed up declined it's not recovering anymore i don't see any big flow activity related to derivative exchanges we had here for example the first time since a while 3000 bitcoins inflow that was yesterday by the way but at the same time 6800 bitcoins outflows cashing out taking profit so if we check that here uh related to stable coins peanuts absolutely peanuts also here yesterday the biggest one 126 millions just few weeks ago we had 300 millions 400 million 600 millions it explains and correlates very well with the open interest less money coming in no open interest will lift up that's the thing so yeah let us go forward that's the uh large time frame the aggregated one um we see open interest maintains here really low leverage ratio declining funding rate with a little dome one trend indicating they are demanding more shorts at the moment maybe it's you know our big weights or something shorting i don't know what is behind but usually when we have that we will go up before we go down so if we check for example liquidations for yesterday 500 long, uh, 500 bitcoins and shots liquidated only 91 in long so nothing big since we dumped from 20800 to 15700 if we check binance that's the binance um chart here we can see that the funding rate also here now uh, demanding more shorts while open interest lifted up but declined a little bit once again with the leverage ratio so looks <laughs> looks not good at all i mean the future market was really um uh, just became really strong since last year and now it's it looks really weak so let us go forward we can check blockchain whispers let us see and yeah that's also confirming it on binance we now have even more shots than longs so we have 51 to 49 and we even have more shots on ethereum than longs 52 to 48 and shots on bitfinex almost nothing have changed to be honest nothing so but yes that looks like confirms what we have seen related to the funding rate they are demanding more shots and that's where we need to be extremely careful i will i i think i will hatch uh for monday so i can make a little bit more money with my long close it go all in with my short and then let's go So let us see what's indicating here. Hmm. Takes time, takes time. Why? Ah. Whew. Oof, 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 oof. So at sixteen six, we have uh, a big well it, it declined once again we had 50 millions yesterday and now it's 35 once again hmm. uh, however we have here liquidation cluster close to the price we have a liquidation cluster short long here and the short side the next bigger one would be here so um if we check that means we can go up wow ah 
I can make here some markers. What? How oh, can I change? Okay, didn't notice that. However, uh, from the current price up to 17,400 matches because I said 17,5 and then go down. Um, otherwise, we should go down to 16,5, also part of my strategy at the moment so that we have a tiny trade range of $1,000 between 75 and 65. Um, otherwise, and to go more forward, we need to uh, go above of 19,200 or below of 15,400. Hmm. I don't think at the moment will happen. We will see what the weekend will bring. But However, we are done here. So we start as usual with Binance, BTC, USDT, uh, that's the CBD here, spot CBD, aggregated CB, uh, spot CBD. We have the coin margin contract CBD, so uh, futures with Bitcoin collateral. And we have the stable coin margin contracts here, so indicating um, with stable coins, mainly USDC or USDT collateral. Uh, if we zoom out, we can see what they are doing and it doesn't, so they are selling market traders really bearish. Um, and you know, I mean, they last time, uh, they pushed a little bit with spot, um, just to, but the main, the main thing was driven by futures, but only futures doesn't work so they need to buy spot at the same time but absolutely not big if we check that i mean that's from december 5th and they reduce market traders um on binance from almost zero to right now 13600 so they have a negative cbd cumulative volume delta of 13,400 Bitcoins in just three days, four days. Uh, that's a lot. That's really a lot. So if we go forward, we see Bitfinex. Well, Bitfinex, it seems uh, once again, FTX 2.0, um, they pushed up. So they, they use the opportunity with futures to push up and they have started now to distribute so it looks completely different to uh, the aggregated spot cbd if we check kraken kraken should do exactly the same like bitfinex because bitfinex is using kraken so yeah it looks similar if we check now bybit by it we're distributing enough or a lot lift it up a little bit and maintaining uh, it's not big so the volume delta as you see it's really tiny we are talking about some hundreds of bitcoins so uh, it's not big the difference between buys and sells is not that big if we check now coinbase coinbase uh, still very bullish here so market traders buying 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 uh, they for example if we check we remember what we have seen uh, have said about the um, aggregated spot uh, almost 2000 uh, 12400 bitcoins less if we check for example here at the same time uh, 475 to 1000 means a gap of almost 500 bitcoins so they bought 500 bitcoins more than they sold in all their time. So peanuts. Bitstamp. Bitstamp. I don't know what they are doing. If they have some insider information or just if they only have long term investors. I really don't know. But they are just buying, buying, buying. And even more than Coinbase. At least uh, the CBD, BTC, USD pair. Um, from here 500 to here 1500 bitcoins so they bought 1500 bitcoins more than they sold someone told me that 
uh, Bitstamp is the retailer's exchange. If that's the case, explains also why wallets related to retailers' entities are lifting up more and more. So Gimini, Gimini is, yeah, um, this weirding market traders lifted up. Now this weirding once again. So you know they used pushed up. Um, the price this viewed it pushed up a little bit more and now this viewing so yeah that's what's happening here let us check the entities uh, we have those retailers maintaining since few days now um, not not accumulating more but also not reducing their balances these guys here 1 to 10 bitcoins wallets buying 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 i guess all these bitstamp re retailers then we have those entities here 10 to 100 bitcoin so we are not talking more about retailers but more about uh sharks or little weights they are pushing up more and more so also getting more bitcoins these guys here as mentioned many times they pushed up they buy let the price go up a little bit and start to sell once again it's quick profit market maker entities lifting up a little bit but nothing so we are far away from accumulation related to the market maker entities <laughs> i will be extremely careful here uh, because these guys are for me in, sp in special the key uh, if i see here accumulation i would start to yeah, to accumulate big, but it's not happening. So I'm I'm playing around. I really, uh, I'm 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 playing. I'm playing with low budget, low money at the moment. I'm talking about few hundred dollars, really. I, I'm not going to risk anything. First of all, because I don't trust the centralized exchanges, um, and. Yeah, you know, the the whole situation, it's still very unclear to me. It doesn't look great, so I'm not going to risk my, my wealth here. And so I'm I'm playing only futures. I have bought some, um, some spot for long term. I don't care. I sent them to my decentralized exchange. Um, and that's it. They are there on change finance and, you know, for long term and i will buy more so i i wouldn't care if we make 50 percent less then i will buy more and send to the decks and maintain there for long term uh, i'm not going to uh, spend my big money here at the moment because of the whole situation i i guess we can go a, uh, even more down and that could give us maybe even a better dip to buy for long term so here currently market maker entity indicating 4,610,000 bitcoins. That's what we can see at the moment. And uh, it's almost 10,000 uh, more than just um, December 7th, but you know, it's not big at all. And well, these guys here, uh, 80 to 90% of these wallets related to uh, centralized exchanges. Um, but some of them also whales and OTCs, whatever, um, lifted up, declining a lot and so on and so forth. So nothing big here. Fun flow. Once again, market maker right now sending more Bitcoins to centralized exchanges. Um, yesterday they sent uh, 1,300 Bitcoins. I knew. Okay, when that happens, it's the local top almost because they did that here as well. They did it here as well. They did it here as well, here as well, <laughs> and so on and so forth. That's what they do. So it's a nice indicator because, you know, they are protecting the price to the upside. They don't want to let the price go up a lot. That's what, what they are doing. And of course, this... 1,300 uh, bitcoins are not enough to manipulate the mar a market price or to drive it, but they use OTCs and futures at the same time as well. That's 
it <clears throat> we can check we can see that um, you know here uh, red uh, it's uh, the positive net flow indicating more um, bitcoins coming in than flowing out uh, we had here some some outflows when the price uh, dumped and now uh, more bitcoins coming in nothing big we are talking at the moment um, 200 150 200 bitcoins and just three hours before almost 900 that matches even to what we have seen to crypto quant. but yeah that's at the moment so nothing big happening even here outflows declined a lot now friday they go over to the weekend mode we know they reduce the volume a lot if we check now uh the balances also here it went up now reducing nothing big still having this gap that's a big one between here and here yeah so uh, if we check that we can say that so we are between 2,675,000 to 2,750,000 a little bit less so I would say something like 74,000 bitcoins still waiting on centralized exchanges I don't know but I think we will see what will happen next week with them that's it from here so let us go forward So Coinbase uh, at the moment looks like protecting 17.5 and it seems also 17, 16,900. Absolutely okay. Gamma wall, uh, we know, 17.5, another 17K. That's the biggest one. So matches very well and it's a little bit indicating we will maintain a little bit that range here, um, maybe over the weekend. So we will see. But uh, yeah, so if we can go to 17.5, that would be amazing. Uh, usually that happens from Saturday to Saturday. So I wouldn't expect anything uh, tonight uh, when Wall Street has closed its session, to be honest. Uh, we will see. Uh, at In three hours, usually SPY should make something. If they don't do anything then it's over over the weekend we should maintain a price range between 17 and 17.5 we can go down to 17k then push up very hard to 17.5 to go down until sunday night back to the cme price level of friday um yeah coinbase uh, reduced or even removed their big wall at seven at 15.5 and right now it's 15 everything open it seems removed liquidity at 12 and instead they reinforced a little bit here something at 13.3 so nothing big happening also to the upside nothing happening um, here also at 18k reinforced a little bit but nothing big so Deribit, that's futures um nothing have changed no they are uh, waiting here too long at 13600 but that's it bitstamp the ultra bullish guys uh they are so bullish that they are waiting here to buy the dip at 14 and lower maybe they are just protecting that area so they start um at 15.4 but reinforced here at 14.6 and below 14.6 so I would be extremely careful it looks like they are smelling something um, yeah also here that's it I don't see anything big also looks like protecting 17.5 also interesting and 17k Binance spot Binance interesting doing exactly the same protecting 75 protecting 17k 16800 so it looks like that's going to be very accurate to the gamma walls that's going to be our trade range 17 
or 16,800 maybe for a little bear trap and then up to 17.5 and then we need to see but it looks like they are preparing the weekend uh, mode already uh, we still have at 19k this big uh, wall and they removed a little bit of bitcoins at 17.8 to sell but also they removed at 16k liquidity also at 16,500 And instead reinforcing 11, reinforcing 11.5, reinforcing 12, so almost 13,000. But nothing big happening here as well. Bitfinex bot. Bitfinex also not doing anything. No. They moved their wall a little bit lower. Also here 17.8 and protecting at 17.5 so 17.5 and once again 16.8 uh, so here waiting but that's it yeah a lot of sell orders to the upside ok spot nothing kraken spot kraken spot limiting the way up at 17.9 also here at 17.5 protecting, also here at 16.8 protecting, removed liquidity to the downside, instead reinforced to the upside. Bybit, nothing. I like Bybit. Bitmax, mm, nothing. They are 17.5, but I don't see anything at 16.8. They removed liquidity to the downside as well. Binance Futures, wow. Whew. Wow, more shorts than longs. It, it was looking like uh, the opposite, but it's not the case. We have even just 200 Bitcoins more, but we have more volume here than here so yeah it's also here we can see that uh, they're you know shorting more here even minus 4500 bitcoins and at the moment a uh, volume delta of minus 121 bitcoins indicating they are shorting more than longing okay bitfinex derivatives we need to reduce a little bit and we can see even here at 16.8, 17.6. Now it matches very well to Coinbase, Binance. Okay, so we have a limitation here between 17.5 and 16.8. That looks extremely um, accurate. That's Kraken Futures. I don't see here anything. Orkex futures. They shifted to the downside at 15.6, waiting with 26,000 bitcoins, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Also, very interesting. So they pushed up from here to here, then they declined, and now they are here. I will never understand what these kinds of walls are because, just to be honest, uh, to be honest, to be honest, that looks like a little bit that's the exchange itself. They removed all the liquidity to the downside, moved a little bit more to the up upside. Um, everything between 13.7 and 12.8, just too long. Um, OKEX swap. We still have at 16.4 uh, this wall, but it's it's not big. It's swap. Oh, and we have another one at 20. Also interesting. And Bybit USDT. Uh, well, Bybit, it's so... It, it feels like extremely unmanipulated. It's not the first time that happens. 
Uh, I'm I'm seeing that and. I like Bybit. I, I don't have any account there, but um, I, I like them. Every time when I'm analyzing all, all exchanges, almost every exchange has, you see signs of, of manipulation or algo trading, or, but not on Bybit. On Bybit, always it looks so completely clean. That's it. Let us go forward. 